there was a um, an article posted, and you may recall that we were talking about an article a few days ago involving a mother who was essentially let go from her job because she got pregnant. And if you want the full discussion on that, it's available on my YouTube channel, Tactics Radio. You can look it up. It, it really is a fascinating story. I think that it's a good segment where we break some of these things down. But this article is largely a response to it, not a rebuttal, just a response. And so because of that, Kyle Whitmire, who is a rabid, rabid leftist, uh, is talking about this in the pages of AL.com. He's a reporter for them. And the headline pretty much says it all. I mean, I I would never encourage somebody to just read a headline and leave it at that and not read the actual story. I think that one of our biggest problems with our outrage culture is that we read headlines and not stories, and then sometimes we get things wrong. This one you can pretty much, like, when I clicked on it, I saw the headline... And I clicked on it, and the article was exactly what I felt that it would be. I mean, I, I could have almost, as a parody, written this thing myself, and it would have turned out almost exactly the same. So the, the headline of this article is, Allegedly Pro-Life Alabama Makes Life, a word that I can't say on the air, for moms. And as you can imagine, it's every bit a piece of leftist drivel that you would imagine it, it to be. And so we're going to go through some of these common arguments. There's nothing new here. There's nothing brilliant here. Whitmire basically just recycles a bunch of old, tired arguments in favor of abortion and in favor of, of some kind of massive social estate. This is basically just him doing that. And there's there's nothing profound in it, but these are common arguments, and because you may run up against some of these arguments in public or in discussing them with your friends and neighbors, I'm going to kind of do this as a service to you so you understand how to counter these. So this is a part of the article. Alabama, we're pro-life. That's what they said. And we elected them. So in effect, we said it too. But it just ain't true. This week, my colleague, Ann Claire Vollers, came again, with a heavy dose of reality. In Alabama, there's a symbolic law on the books against abortion, but there's nothing in those same pages to protect mothers before or after their babies are born. All right, so here's the thing. This is a really, really common red herring fallacy that gets brought up all the time, whether you're discussing abortion in Alabama or you're discussing it anywhere else in the country. You hear leftists repeat this over and over again. Oh, well, you care about babies in the womb, but you don't care about them once they're born and you don't care about mothers. It's a red herring fallacy. Whether or not people are taking care of mothers or not has nothing to do with whether or not you should have the right to kill a child in their womb. Now, if you want to have a separate discussion about that and whether or not we should be taking care of, and by that they usually mean a, a giant socialist welfare program, but we can have that discussion. But it makes no sense to tie it to abortion. These are two completely different issues, and trying to tie them together doesn't make any sense. So you've got that right off the bat. Their logic essentially boils down to, well, Alabama's really mean to mothers, and so to be nice to them, we should let them kill their children in the womb. First of all, I don't understand how that's being nice to women anyway. And even if Alabama was mean to mothers by not giving them things that you're talking about, even if that were the case, I don't understand how abortion would make recompense for that. That might be an issue, that might be an argument for being nicer to mothers, but offering them abortion is not an answer to that. If you're saying that Alabama needs to do more to protect mothers or do more to help the kids that are born, okay, well, that's a discussion that I'm open to having. Normally, the left, like I said, brings that up and their solution is very different than mine. But the point is, I'm not opposed to having that discussion, but trying to tie the two together just doesn't make any sense. Um, because a, a great example of this, let's test drive that logic for a second. Let's take it out for a spin and see if it works when you change the groups around. Let's say, you know what? Alabama does not have a law 
that says you can't fire Muslims for being Muslims, which, by the way, there actually are anti-discrimination laws, but I'm just going with a hypothetical here. You know, there's no law in Alabama that says you can't fire a Muslim because they're Muslim, so what we ought to do is we ought to kill the Jews, because Muslims hate the Jews, and if we killed the Jews, that would make the Muslims happy, so that's what we should do. Alabama's real mean to the Muslims, and so that would be the way to solve the problem. No, it wouldn't. The idea that we should be taking the rights from one group of people to appease another group of people that we haven't been nice enough to, and by that the left means give lots of free stuff at taxpayer expense, that doesn't make any sense. And yet it is the argument that we hear over and over and over again from the left. I, yes, it, it doesn't make any sense, but they continue to repeat it as though it does. So here's another piece of that article. In Alabama, an allegedly pro-life state, this is what passes for maternity leave. You're pregnant, you're fired. As, uh, as Bowlers reports, more than half of states have laws protecting moms from being fired for being moms. All right, here's the thing. We went over this piece last week. If you want more details on that, I highly recommend you check out my video on it. And I'm not saying that you just take my word for it. I would rather, and I actually say this in that piece that I did, I would rather you go find this article. Uh, you can find it on AL.com. It's titled, um, oh, well, I don't remember the exact title, but it essentially boils down to uh, moms being, being fired for being moms. Alabama says that's okay. It's something to that effect. You can check it out. I have the link to the actual original article on all of my uh, social media platforms. You can scroll down and look at it on Twitter, on Facebook. I'm not saying just take my word for it. Read the article yourself and then watch my analysis of it and see which one you think is right. I'm fine with that. But the point is, uh, we went over this already, and as I concluded in that video, just giving you a quick summary of it, those protections are unnecessary because the free market takes care of it. And what's hilarious is the story that they use in that article to try to make the case that there should be protections for women that get pregnant in the workplace. In that story that they try to hold up as the pinnacle of why we need these protections, the free market did its job. The woman wound up getting a better job than she had before with a boss that was more understanding and had better benefits to help accommodate the fact that she was a new mom. And the idiot boss that was a jerk to her for no reason lost a dedicated employee. The free market did exactly what it was supposed to do in the very story that they're trying to hold up as an example of, well, this is why we need these protections and this is why just leaving it to the free market doesn't work. Their own story, it proves why you don't need those laws in place. It just astounds me that they don't see that. But anyway, he goes on further down. Usually, a statistic like that comes with an ugly map of southern outliers that looks a heck of a lot like a Confederate atlas. But not this time. North Carolina, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Texas all have laws protecting mothers in the workplace. Heck, even West Virginia has such a law, a state that's been doing its, word I can't say on the air, to displace Mississippi as 50th in everything. This has very little to do with the actual subject matter of the story, but real quick, I think it does bear uh, mentioning. Leftist journalists in this state have a really weird habit of constantly dumping on the state and dumping on the South in general, and yet continue to live here. I've always found that weird, because they always talk about it as it's this evil, racist, uh, satanic state of some kind, that we're still living in the Confederacy and we're still enslaving people. To read the, the things that they say about the South, you would think that that is going on to this day, and yet they continue to live here. It's really strange. They wouldn't even have to leave the country they could literally just drive six or seven hours and start a new life doing pretty much the same thing in a different state. If it's so horrible and it's so awful and they can't stand it and it's the worst place you could possibly live and it's filled with evil racist Christians and bigots that are so closed-minded, why do you continue to live here? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, sure, Alabama in the South has problems. 
And there's even some things that we're tailing behind on, and I'll be the first one to admit those. But I don't understand the constant bashing and this assumption that the South is an evil, very bad place. And what's interesting to me is they know that they can say this. They know that it whips up their base because this guy is not writing and he knows he's not writing to an objective third party or to conservatives. He's writing specifically to a base of Democrats, liberals in the state of Alabama that similarly loathe the place that they live yet continue to live here. It's a really weird dynamic that I've never understood. I mean, and you reverse it. If you had a conservative that was constantly complaining about how backwards and, and weird and how they've tried to create a giant nanny state in California or New York, my immediate response would be, well, why are you still living there? This isn't just a conservative versus liberal thing. It wouldn't make sense if it were reversed. But anyway, that's just kind of the way that it goes. Uh, here's the... Um, Here's the an, another piece of that article. And Alabama doesn't just lag behind in workplace protections. Let us count the ways. Fewer than half the counties in Alabama have hospitals where a woman can have a baby. This cannot be said enough. Alabama consistently ranks the worst of uh, the worst five states for infant mortality. Twice in the last five years, we have we were the absolute worst. In the last four years, we've ranked third worst for birth weight. The same goes for preterm births. All right, every single one of these, perfectly legitimate complaints and problems. I don't have a single problem with addressing any of the issues brought up here. And if there is a government program, even though, you know, I tend to be very libertarian, if there is a government program that you can show me that it will work and actually have a positive effect, I'll at least consider, you know, maybe supporting it. But again, he's using a complete red herring here. He's basically using this as saying, well, see, Alabama doesn't really care about children. Well, yeah, people on both sides of the aisle see these as legitimate issues that ought to be addressed. They may disagree on how to address them, but I don't know of anybody that hears that Alabama has one of the worst, and this is true, one of the worst infant mortality rates in the country and says, ah, eh, no big deal, we'll be fine. I don't know of anybody on either side of the aisle that says that. And it's also worthy of note that even though Alabama does have one of the worst infant mortality rates in the country, it is still infinitely higher than the vast majority of the world. America has a very low infant mortality rate. And even in a state like Alabama, where it's higher than the other 49 states, it's still pretty darn low. Doesn't mean that we can't address these things. Doesn't mean there's not lots of room for improvement that I am willing to hear your case on. But the point is, we can't treat it as though it's this massive tragedy that we're so far behind the rest of the world. No, it's pretty good here compared to the rest of the world. And here's another thing, too. He's very concerned about infant mortality rate, and yet he's openly advocating for abortion. Now, I want you to put your thinking caps on here. What is the infant mortality rate of successfully aborted children? Oh yeah, 100%. I've always thought it was super weird that people in Alabama start bringing up the infant mortality rate while advocating for abortion. Perfectly legitimate problem, like I said, something that we do need to work on, something that we've got to figure out a way to get that down. But why would you bring that up as though this is a great tragedy, which it is, while also advocating for a policy that kills children. You want to bring down the infant mortality rate? Stop abortions. That's going to do an awful lot to curb it. it it's just, it, it is a testament to how depraved their mind are that they're like, you know what? Too many babies die in Alabama. Also, we need to make sure that laws are available to women to kill their children. Well, if the goal is more living babies... You can't really be pro-abortion. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And here's the, uh, the last part of this article that we'll read. Alabama lawmakers aren't ignorant of these things. A majority of them just don't care. When lawmakers debated unenforceable abortion bans, 
Senator Linda Coleman Madison of Birmingham, uh, Madison and Birmingham, argued loudly and passionately for doing better for Alabama's mothers and children. Quote, the sin to me is bringing a child in this world and not taking care of them, Coleman Madison said then. The sin for me is that the state does not provide adequate care. We don't provide education, and when the child is born and we know that the mother is in, uh, indigent, then she cannot take care of the child. We don't provide any support for that mother. You see... Again, I don't have to rehash that this is a massive red herring fallacy because we've already gone over that. But this is really the crux of the leftist argument. Because if you were to distill this entire article into a very simple worldview, what it would be is, you know what, if you really loved me, you'd let me do what I want and give me lots of free stuff. That is the thinking behind this article. Basically, the left operates like a very emotional teenage girl. The, the second that you say that you're not going to give them their way or you're not going to buy things for them, they say, well, if you really loved me, if you really cared about me, you'd give me lots of free stuff. If you really cared about me, you'd let me do what I want and not, not ask questions. Perfect example of this was the Hobby Lobby case, where they wanted their employer to be legally mandated to provide their birth control, but also not have any say over what birth control was purchased. That would be like your teenager saying, I want your credit card, and I want to be able to go out and buy things, I just don't want you to have any say over what I buy. No, that's not how this works. Again, that, that is a different discussion, but really what it all does come down to is they want lots of free stuff, and they want to be able to do whatever they want. That's not the way that this is going to work. Look, if you want to take the libertarian position on it, I disagree with it because most libertarians are pro-abortion. I think that that violates the first principle of libertarianism, which is my liberty stops, uh, my liberty to swing my fist stops where your face starts because there is another person involved. But nonetheless, I at least understand where they're coming from. They say, you got to take care of yourself. Live and let live. But they're trying to make that argument, and then on top of it saying, well, I want you to let me do what I want, but I also want you to pay for all of it. It's absolute and utter madness, and this is why people get frustrated with the left, is because their thinking essentially goes no deeper, it is no more mature than an angry teenage girl. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.